Hooray! We have a new doctor properly after um, our regenerative nonsense. Hooray! You've had your hair cut as well since the last video. And a haircut as well. Hooray. Libs, did you know it was the master? About three seconds before he revealed himself three as the master. Seconds. So uh, I thought, uh, what was the other one called? S the one that was wearing black. Shardavan. Shardavan. I thought he was going to turn. That, that's the black. setup, isn't it? That's yeah. I fell for it. Um, and that's good. It's a good setup. God, isn't Castrovalva a lovely place? What, what a, you know, what a set of shame. What a tragedy. And the doctor thinks at the end he can get, still get them out, uh, and it's hopeless. But he does it anyway, and then he pays that piece of celery from his pocket. Never seems fine about it, to be fair. Yeah, well, that's that's the nature <laughs> yeah. of Doctor Who, isn't it? You, it's just like, yeah, all you, those people, they were imaginary anyway, fuck them. You can't pile up the trauma in Doctor Who, can you? Because if you did... It's quite traumatic, all the people crushing them to get out. Like, it made me a bit... And those extra. those last scenes with the master, them holding on to, are actually quite upsetting, really, when you... So... What performance for Anthony Ainley as the poor Treve, which we didn't talk about last week for obvious reasons, last time for obvious reasons, because I didn't want Liv to know. But that, I mean, that's a stunning. That's three different characters essentially he's played in three stories, and all of them have been utterly convincing. What a talented the man. was good. Yeah, Brilliant so makeup. Good. Just a really well pitched performance. Um, I have to say um, that. Tegan in this story is absolutely brilliant. Really love Tegan. What a third story. For, second? Second story for her. Only a second story. Yeah. <coughs> so Where's well, Legopolis Castrovalva? Oh, my gosh. And she's, like, definitely rooted herself as one of the really well favourite yeah. uh, people well, ever. There you go. There you go. Uh, Nissa plays her role. As, she doesn't really, though, does she? She's underwritten, I would say. And also... She just doesn't do anything. She's but when, when the master's there, she should be... There should be something there. I know she's a she scientist. Like, you killed my father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you look like my dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And but she's just like totally blank. And Lib said that she feels that Adric is better with Davison. Yes. Yeah. Let's talk about the new doctor then. But let's talk about the fact it's called Castro Vulva. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. Because Castro means castle and vulva means vulva. Always so bringing the. Vulva castle. <laughs> always bringing the high quality analysis. <laughs> That's analysis. Um, right, so what's this new doctor like then? Well, he is more willing to listen. I think that's one of the first things I've spotted. He actually takes in the 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 uh, experience, the observation of people around him. He seems more fallible, which is a really that's is that the biggest change from Tom? Tom, who just was bombast and pure ego, and then suddenly we've got this doctor who just seems. It, he might. If there's a feeling he might lose. He's lacking the confidence. Isn't yeah, he? he's it's short of confidence. Arrogance. Yeah, yeah. There's there's grumpiness there. It's almost as if um, he's lost something in the transition. Not in a negative way. That sounds it makes it sound negative, but from going from the most ego driven creature in the universe to somebody who's a nice chap. Oh, yeah, he seems um, much which younger. Is weird because obviously he's still the doctor and he is older. And it's like that bit at the end where he's like drilling the companions. Hunt two, hunt two, one, two. It's such a sort of silly little moment. But you, for a start, you wouldn't have Tom ever doing that. He wouldn't drill the companions in that way. That's just not a Tom he's, thing. He's not playful enough. But I also think it's when you pretend to be a grown up a little bit. It's the sort of thing. When you're young, you think grown-ups do. And they don't. They don't toss. Grown-ups don't care. We don't care. All grown-ups do is decide what to have for tea every night. That's it. We had and halloumi tonight. That, I mean, when I struck upon the tea for tonight, I was well delighted. Everybody seemed happy. That's because we're grown-ups. It's a win. What a grown-up thing to do. So I have to say, Castro Alva overall, I think two episodes of The Run Around in the TARDIS. Lib makes a very salient point saying that the, the recursive occlusion notion, it does apply to the TARDIS, and so you do that, that thematic flow through. But even with that very clever piece of critical analysis, thank you, it's TM Libby Collins over there, I still think that when you get to actually get to Castrovalva and the quality of the programme just soars, I mean, it really soars. In the same way that there was, there hasn't been another um, Doctor Who story like Legopolis, really. No other Doctor Who story really feels like Legopolis until this point. I mean, we'll see as we go. Castrovalva takes, I mean, there's a bit of like, 
Mask of Mandragora in there, for example, that sort of vague Renaissance thing. There's a bit almost of Keeper of Traken in there, which I know is very recent, but by the by. But it's just so, it, I mean, the contrast between the very pleasant, I mean, all the Castrovalvans, with the obvious exception of Portree, are so nice and so sort of, not three-dimensional, I would say, but they're sort of rounded characters and you like them all. And you, you sort of want them. And the bit when he's drawn the map on the... What a simple little well, bit of television. Here. Yeah, it's here, here, um, here. here. Oh. What a brilliant little moment there. That's really good writing. I saw um, a poll on Twitter and there was a... Uh, was it script writer? It might have been writers or script editors. I can't remember which it was. But it was Bidmead versus Adams. And I looked at it for a long time and I clicked on Bidme. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason for that is Adams was genius. There's no doubt that Adams is a genius. And Adams, you know, City of Death, it speaks for itself. But whereas that is, and this is John Spears, TM John Spears critique, John said that he feels that City of Death is more of a Douglas Adams thing than a Doctor Who thing. Or he said something along those lines. I'm not trying to misquote him. And I completely get where he's coming from. I think Doctor Who is a broad enough church to encompass that. But there's no doubt in my mind that Logopolis and Castrovalva um, progress, uh, they, they, they evolve Doctor Who in a way. Now, to be fair, City of Death, I think I've already said in this grand experiment, is the template for 21st century Doctor Who in many ways. And therefore, I've just completely undercut my own critical analysis. But what you gain here, you see, is two sides of the argument. Because we never show Lib, so she can't do the other side. So there we go. I, I, I can't remember because I've resolved the argument so beautifully and there we go well, thank you I win so that was brilliant Castro Valva absolutely. what a fantastic start to, first doctor, uh, to, to the fifth doctor um, this crew okay let's go with this crew Tegan brilliant uh, Nissa and Adric still have questions to be answered although we think Adric's up to and I like Nissa but I, I mean get rid of Nissa kill her off no don't kill Nissa off we like this she's good who lasts longer Nissa or Tegan 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 lasts as long as the fifth doctor. Tegan leaves. No, I'm not telling you this. Anyway, right, okay. Boom. Yes. Bing, bada, boom. Yes, wonderful. Bye.